Case number two, Carlyle versus the Smokeball Company. Mrs. Carlyle was an elderly woman who purchased a smoke ball from the Smokeball Company after seeing their poster which declared, £100 reward will be paid by the Carbolic Smoke Ball Company to any person who contracts the influenza after having used the ball three times daily for two weeks according to the printed directions supplied with each ball. They will use the item as instructed but still caught the flu. She then attempted to claim the £100 but was rejected by the company on the grounds that the advertisement was merely a sales puff since you couldn't make a contractual offer to the entire world. The company also pointed out that the contracts required notified acceptance, and since Mrs. Carlyle did not notify them that she wanted to accept the offer, she could not claim the reward. The Court of Appeal ruled that Mrs. Carlyle was owed the money due to the following facts. First and foremost, the ad showed a clear promise on which the company was contractually obliged to follow through. As well as this, the courts ruled that you can, in fact, make an offer to the rest of the world, and that this is exactly what the Smokeball Company's advertisement did. This makes the ad a unilateral offer, so anyone that fulfilled the express conditions was entitled to the reward. And last but not least, the judges rule that advertisements are an exception to the general rule that one must provide notification of their acceptance of a contract to the other parties. This is because the contracts are made of the implied expectation that anyone who fulfills the conditions stated have accepted the offer. The judge dealing with this case, Lord Justice Lindley, had this to say, Was it a mere puff? My answer to that question is no, and I base my answer upon this passage. £1,000 is deposited with the Alliance Bank showing us sincerity in the matter. The deposit is called in aid by the advertiser as proof of his sincerity in the matter. These advertisements are of offers to anybody who performs the conditions, and anybody who does perform the condition accepts the offer. Unquestionably, as a general proposition, when an offer is made, it is necessary in order to make a binding contract, not only that it should be accepted, but that the acceptance should be notified. But is that so in cases of this kind? I apprehend that they are an exception to that rule, or, if not an exception, they are open to the observation that the notification of the acceptance need not precede the performance. To summarise this case, this case was the attempt of a company to trick the public into feeling confident in their product by feigning a reward. Unfortunately for them, however, the court of law found that they had made a real contract after all. And as for Mrs Carlyle, well, she received her £100 and lived to the ripe old age of 96, when, funnily enough, she died of the flu.